Good morning, everyone. It is July 30th, 2024. Happy Tuesday. And today we do have a slight risk for severe weather, as you can see, kind of going up from the northern plains down into the southern most part of the Ohio Valley, as well as a 2% tornado risk kind of in those slight areas. We do have a little one here in North Dakota, as well as a bigger one kind of in the Midwest into the Ohio Valley. And as you can see, we also have a hatched risk for wind today in the Midwest, showing kind of mostly just in Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois. And for day two, we also have a slight risk for severe weather, as you can see, kind of in the Northern Plains into the Southern Plains a little bit, mostly just kind of in Minnesota, South Dakota, Iowa, Nebraska, kind of going into Kansas here. Um, our 2% outlook for tomorrow is mostly in the Midwest again, kind of Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, kind of going into South Dakota and Nebraska, um, but we do have the slight risks for hail and wind, thankfully no hatched risks or anything at this time. And then for day three, we also have a slight risk in Minnesota, South Dakota, and Iowa, kind of going a little bit into Nebraska but we will look more into that as it approaches. Now, starting off with the European model, as you can see, you can kind of show these storms kind of going from Minnesota to Iowa into Illinois, kind of showing as a line of storms here and not really separating until it hits the border into Kentucky. And then it does kind of reform a little bit after that into the morning to afternoon hours of the 31st. Now looking at the GFS model here, as you can see, it is kind of showing a completely different story as to where this storm is going to properly go in its direction and how it's going to form. The GFS model is showing it kind of go in just an easterly direction through Illinois and then kind of going to a southeast direction into Indiana as it dissipates. I would just be aware of this storm if you are technically in the slight risk. Even if you aren't in the slight risk and you're in the marginal risk, I would still just be prepared as always. And I did want to show you guys what it looked like for the northern plains today and tomorrow. Um, and as you can see, it is kind of showing this storm kind of go down Minnesota into Iowa and then kind of form that storm that goes into Illinois, kind of that line. And then after that, as you can see, kind of in the afternoon of the 31st, we do start to get those lines of storms here in South Dakota, kind of going back into Iowa and Minnesota again. Now moving on to the above average temperatures, that's kind of just putting the U.S. in a chokehold here, but we do have that most intense above average temperature still in the northwest of the United States, kind of near Washington, Oregon, Idaho, that area. Just if you are kind of really anywhere in the west of the United States, especially, I would make sure you are staying cool, drinking a lot of fluids if you are outside, especially with the fires that are going on up there. I know they're having a lot of issues with wildfires, especially in this intense area of above average temperatures this week. So just be vigilant if you are in those areas as always. And for the eight to 14 day outlook, we actually might be getting a little bit of below average temperatures finally. We might be seeing more of this heat dome kind of go away because we do have the northern part of the United States getting a little bit of that cool down. So hopefully it does move down into the US as time goes by. Hopefully we get a little bit of a chill here. And here's the precipitation for the next 48 hours and where they believe it is going to fall. And as you can see, it is kind of showing most of the rainfall here, kind of in Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, into Kentucky, as well as some showers up here in the Northeast and a little bit up here in the Northern Plains, where these storms are supposed to supposedly begin. And moving on to the tropics, as you can see, they have changed this formation to 60% for the next seven days still. They are still predicting that it is not going to really do anything in the next 48 hours. 
but they do kind of predict that it's going to start forming if it does around August 1st, 2nd, 3rd. So just be aware of that if you are kind of in the southeast. I would not freak out about anything just yet because again we don't know where this storm is going to go exactly and how strong it is going to get if it even forms at all. It does have a lot of obstacles it still has to go through before it is able to form properly. And we do still have a lot going on in the eastern Pacific. As you can see we do have a 70% chance of this cyclonic formation to properly form in the next seven days not counting the one that is already at 90% and it is at an 80% for the next 48 hours. So they do believe this one is going to form pretty soon, but it is kind of going out to sea, thankfully, so hopefully it keeps that direction. We also do have that 30% for this cyclonic formation kind of out more towards the Central Pacific. They have given that a 10% chance of forming in the next 48 hours, but that seven day is still 30%. Now, before we end the video here today, I did just want to show you guys what's going on in the tropics on the models here. And as you can see, it still has this kind of tropical storm forming, but it is very, very scattered if it's anything and that's kind of going, still swinging off the coast a little bit, but it doesn't look like it's going to really be powerful enough to form anything beyond a depression at, with the European model. Although on the GFS model, as you can see, it does show this storm kind of going up the other end of Florida and kind of just twirling in the Gulf for a little bit and then it will kind of make landfall over here kind of as a low-end hurricane but those are still very different scenarios um, as you can see the one we had before didn't even really get strong enough to barrel off of the US it didn't really even look like it was able to form anything but in the GFS model, it showed pretty much the opposite. So that does kind of show that we are still not really sure what this is going to do. But we will keep an eye on it as it approaches. And yeah, that was pretty much all I had to say today. So thank you guys so much for watching. It really means a lot to me. And if you do like the content and you would like to stay updated on your weather, please be sure to like and subscribe. Maxi out. Bye-bye.